Hi everyone and welcome to IBTM Connect. My name is Michael Jones and I'm the event director for IBTM Asia Pacific, which is taking place in a live face-to-face -face format on the 8th to 9th of June, 2021 in Singapore. IBTM Connect is all about keeping us engaged and united as an industry, as we work together to bring you the best possible content. Today I'm joined by Maria Elena Rossi, Marketing and Promotion Director at Ennet, Italian National Tourist Board. Luca Martinazzoli, General Manager at Convention Bureau Milano, and Flamina Roberti, Global Sales Director at AIM Group International. In this webinar, you will learn what steps Italy is taking to prepare for a brighter events future, including how Milan is preparing to open its doors to visitors and restart business. We will also discuss the role tourism organizations can play in your new My Strategies and activities, as well as exploring how you can reinvent your Congress to meet the needs of the future. Thank you again for joining us and don't forget to submit your questions in the text box below. I will now hand over to Maria. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure being uh, with you and, uh, and to share insights and scenarios uh, with all of you, and especially with uh, Luca and Flaminia, who are with us uh, today. As the National Tourist Board and one of the leader countries in the world in tourism, we, we do believe we hold a great responsibility towards our public and private stakeholders in Italy and abroad and more in general within the tourism industry to set the path towards a restart, which will be able to deliver concrete answers concerning key values such as sustainability, diversity and inclusion. The true challenge that we are all facing, I really do believe this, is finding the balance between economic development and social and environmental development. Uh, I do think that this is really um, a new um, key um, issue for us as, as tourist boards and as a national tourism organization. In our three-year plan, we have always um, uh, outlined how important it is, uh, the concept of value growth, which is not uh, so much in terms only of economic um, uh, development, as I said, but to bring values to destinations, community and, and tourists, of course. This objective is, is even more true today, as we have seen all certainties, uh, and I'm talking about, for Italy, about um, half a billion overnights, uh, just this whole overnight. And um, 2020 has put us under a very, very strong pressure, all of us, from many perspectives. Uh, operating in a crisis management mode, which we didn't uh, know before. And has changed, this has changed totally our priorities as a tourist board, focusing on reputation management and support to the tourism sector. Media relation and global brand management has become crucial and still is today. With more than 20, uh, with 28 offices around the world monitoring the internet and acting towards all medias is a 24 hour and uh, daily job that um, that changed really the way we, we have been looking at the industry so far. Cross channel campaigns have seen Italy during all 2020 um, as a protagonist and the marketing campaigns uh, per segment market and product um, with um, uh, aim at this time of, of brand awareness uh, is uh, will be uh, going on uh, for 2021 as well, waiting to see how the development will be and and to to keep in mind the flexibility which uh, we need to have in marketing. Every day we change actually actually we've been changing our marketing plans. 
uh, likewise, another uh, challenge has been setting up new tools of marketing intelligence to enable us to have more profound and updated insights on all key elements influencing our sectors, uh, which are many, as, as you know, all know, as we all know. The support of the tourism inter industry has meant creating virtual platforms uh, for the exchange of information and to keep the connection between suppliers and buyers around the world. And this is also true, of course, for the meeting industry, where we have been uh, um, kept high the awareness uh, of our main city's destination and of all the industry uh, in order to, um, to, uh, to be there when the time comes. Uh, Italy ranked sixth worldwide in 2019 for international meetings and knowing that the restart will need time and that many opportunities are open, therefore, this is the way we should see it uh, to reshape our industry. Uh, our, objective, our objective for the coming five years is uh, to become one of the three countries for international meetings in the world. This objective, which is of course very ambitious, uh, implies the support from our side in the re reshape of the industry to adapt with the new trends and the opportunities, uh, major support to our main players uh, in, the, in the meeting industry uh, for the attractions of events, and of course, very strong marketing investments. In this respect, I'm so very happy to have with us uh, Luca Martinazzoli, uh, who um, has uh, given us a very strong sign uh, on how much uh, our, uh, the city of Milan and all its players want to, uh, to be a protagonist in the future in, the, in this industry. So um, it's very, it's a pleasure for me to uh, to uh, uh, give word to uh, to uh, Luca in, and to tell us uh, what the challenges are and the objectives uh, of of Milan, uh, which of course we will be supporting in uh, now and for the coming years. So thank you very much. I'm of course, open for any questions you might have. Grazie, Maria Elena. And uh, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. I, I guess we have audience from all over the world, and it's always difficult to talk without looking in the eyes of people. And I think that for all of us who have been working in events, uh, this is a very new um, condition, like we, we, in which we are building relationship. We are moving from using the eyes to try to use the screens, uh, but it's um, a very uh, challenging and interesting time for, for all of us. And um, today I, I prepared a few slides I'd love to share with you, introducing a bit the work we are doing as a city um, of Milano. And um, I, I'd love to, to start uh, sharing um, the video. I am... Okay. Could you? Uh, hope you, you can see my screen now. <laughs> yeah. and, um, I, I want to introduce myself uh, and a video organization I'm working with. Um, I'm um, general manager of Milan and Partners, which is uh, the promotion agency of the mayor of Milano, uh, which is bringing together different actors and uh, which is also the, the company which is managing the convention bureau. Uh, before digging into um, our, our journey in this um, 2020 and the journey we want to uh, approach in the next five years, I want to share with you a very um, short piece of content. And um, I, I started with this piece of content just to tell you that the city is alive. 
we had a terrible 2020, but uh, we have been uh, diving into this journey and uh, we have celebrated Christmas uh, together with a lot of players and the stakeholders of the city, enlightening the city of Milano with more than 25 beautiful Christmas trees. And uh, yes, we didn't have any tourists, we this is the city in this period of time, but it was an incredible moment where all the city came together uh, and um, celebrated uh, the, the beauty of being alive and being uh, together in the beautiful city of Milano. Milan and Partner was launched um, a couple of years ago by the mayor of Milano. Uh, maybe it's strange for you, but um, it's the first time the city of Milano decided to invest uh, in a promotion agency. Uh, as you may know, Milano has not been very active uh, in the 80s, in the 90s in, in tourism, uh, but with the discover of the Expo uh, and the amazing success of Expo in 2015, uh, Milano found itself uh, in a condition to, to be appealing uh, to a significant number of people. Uh, in 2019, we have attracted uh, um, more than 10 million tourists, and I want to say that the biggest driver, the main driver of Milano is a destination has been always the mice industry and specifically an incredible um, infrastructure uh, for big events and exhibitions and the beautiful infrastructure for congresses. So uh, we have moved from five, six million before 2015 to more than uh, 10 million in 2019 and clearly now uh, we, we are approaching you know, this uh, new normal in a different way and luckily, we have been able to come together and, and, and build the muscle who can support us in this difficult time. The, our mission, I mean, and I guess it's, you know, the, the mission of most of the people who is attending this uh, seminar today is the one to make our city uh, the most welcoming in the world. And uh, we work very hard uh, with all the players to really nail a, a fantastic uh, customer journey in our city. Um, you may know Milano for a lot of reasons, right? Uh, it's a creative city, it's a design city, we have amazing food, we have great art. Uh, but probably, you know, one of the most um, distinctive elements of the city of Milano is that it's a very functional city. It's a, it's a, basically, it's a global capital with uh, 1.5 million people living here, which is giving us um, an amazing quality of life. And uh, the infrastructure of the city, and I'm talking about public transportation uh, specifically, is amazing. Um, it's one of the best in the world in terms of um, how it works and how it's serving our customers. So um, we, we work hard in, to, to really nail the, the customer journey. We have, as a, as a company, three main you know, uh, area that we, we push. The first one is you know, to attract visitors, specifically in the mice industry. We work a lot to attract human capital. And we have a strong strategy to attract international students. Uh, Milano has more than 200,000 uh, university students, which make us uh, one of the students' capital in Italy, but also in Europe. And we work hard to attract enterprises for indirect investment. We, those are the area we, we manage as a company on the behalf of the city of Milano and our um, key partners. Um, let me talk now a bit about our journey, which is a tough journey, right? Um, you have seen Milano on newspapers um, almost uh, 11 months ago. Uh, Milano was one of the first city uh, who has embraced um, the virus. Uh, and um, it, it's been tough, right? Um, I picked some images that stuck uh, in my heart uh, because uh, I, I work in the city center and I've been coming to my office every day um, working with the municipality to, to manage and to approach uh, um, these crises. And the city has been empty for a couple of months. And when I say empty, I say that it became an amazing st stage um, where uh, there were no billboards, uh, no people, uh, bars were locked down. And, and clearly, uh, this put us in a very tough condition. You know, we've been starting to ask a lot of questions to ourselves as a city, as a destination, 
Uh, we've been thinking about you know, our positioning across the world, uh, our relationship with our key partners across the world, uh, the reputation of our city. Uh, but we have reacted in, in a fantastic way. The city of Milano, or the uh, citizen, or the enterprises of the people, has been able uh, to transform this journey in a, in a positive journey in order to really nail the future of the city and uh, untap um, great opportunities uh, for us, uh, opportunity to fix what has been wrong in the city in the past uh, and, and try to fix um, an open door for, for innovation and, and new businesses. Um, we launched a campaign uh, um, after the first wave of the pandemic um, called uh, A New Start, One Step at a Time, uh, giving you a bit the sense that we have uh, looked in the eyes of the virus of the pandemic and tried to, to, to really rethink about ourselves and reinvent our city. And, and we have been able to bring the city together across one very positive and transformative agenda. Uh, to the point that our mayor, uh, Beppe Sala, uh, who has been also the managing director of Expo in 2015, has been elected as a chair of uh, a C40 task force on COVID-19. Uh, C40 is the most important city network across the world, which includes cities like London, Los Angeles. Um, and, uh, and Mayor Sala has been elected as a chair of this task force, really pushing the global agenda on how to um, build a roadmap to recover our cities uh, across the world. And specifically, um, I, I want to stress here, and, and I want to thank you, Elena, who gave us the word, uh, the fact that uh, cities are, are you know, more and more epicenter of uh, economic development, and uh, it's, it's very important to come together in this moment and try to build a common strategy uh, to restart. We, are, uh, we have been at the epicenter of the pandemic, but at the same time, we have the opportunity to really relaunch uh, the economic development of our country. So we don't only play a role for ourselves, but we play a really a leading role for Italy and potentially with all our partners across Europe. Uh, the first uh, piece uh, of work that has been done by the city has been to reinvent mobility. Uh, and um, in the first semester of 2020, we rolled out a master plan to design and implement uh, 350 kilometers of uh, bike lanes. Um, this was uh, very disruptive in the city of Milano. Uh, we've been waiting for bike lanes, uh, but the, the pandemic give, gave us the opportunity to act and to react in a fantastic way. Um, Milano has uh, the highest number of bicycles in sharing already, so we, we have been investing a lot on, um, on mobility, uh, but we didn't have the right infrastructure to you know, suggest our customers, our citizens, to you know, move around the city with a bike. And, uh, and for the one who will join us in the next month, you will see a very different city that you can really uh, cross with a bicycle in a, in a safe way. Uh, secondly, we have pushed um, a strategy to support uh, restaurants and bar, giving the opportunity to them uh, to open up uh, outdoor um, spaces. And uh, this is another huge transformation of the city of Milano. Uh, basically, all around this, the streets of our city in different neighborhoods, we have been able to see restaurants investing in beautiful um, outdoor tables and, and, and places. And we have seen people coming together in a very different way in the respect of the new normal, uh, which suggests to stay open air as much as possible. Uh, but I believe that um, this is going to stay, we believe it's going to stay and it's going to give you a completely new flavor of a lot of neighborhoods in our city. We did even more. Uh, we, we took the opportunity to design more open spaces. So uh, we, we have been able to transform um, a lot of uh, public squares uh, through technical urbanism, which means that we've been able to act very fast in painting and redesigning uh, public spaces of together and not giving um, a 
common sense of a much better quality of life, uh, a much better uh, sharing of public space, and in general, a, a new care of the public space. So again, uh, I think um, it's another huge innovation who gave us the opportunity to rethink completely the strategy uh, of uh, promoting the city in terms of uh, its assets. Uh, we have been moving from uh, promoting a, a city with a beautiful skyline um, and a beautiful landmark, which is Duomo di Milano, to a city made of um, uh, 80 neighborhoods. And we have been helping each neighborhood to design a specific branding and a specific promotion plan. Uh, so you can expect that in the next uh, couple of years, we're going to uh, position different neighborhoods of the city of Milano as destination for our city. Uh, it, it's a strategy developed also by other cities and um, across the world. And uh, we, we believe it's a, a very interesting way to de redesign the quality of life and giving each neighborhood the right infrastructure to offer the citizen everything at a distance of 15 minutes. Uh, clearly, we have been working a lot also about um, safety. Um, our biggest actor in, in, uh, in the mice industry, uh, Miko, that I'm sure you know, because he's the best um, place in Italy for uh, congresses, and probably one of the best and the largest place in Europe. Uh, and our airports invested massively in order to uh, secure uh, our spaces and to offer a, a safe customer journey for our uh, clients for now and for the future. Uh, we're talking about significant investments aligned clearly with the European policies. Um, but I think that um, for the one who has been in Milano and know how the city functions, and I was telling you that it's you know one of the best secrets of the city that we have an incredible efficiency in managing our infrastructure. Um, we did an incredible uh, investment in short term to, to make those destinations or airports uh, or places our hotels safe in the respect of, of the virus. Um, we have also launched a convention broad, and, and, and again, uh, it could be strange for you to hear this, uh, as probably you know that Milano is, uh, has, has an incredible reputation for grandresses. We have hosted very important events in the past uh, 15 years. Uh, but it's the case that the city, the municipality, didn't really invest in building an infrastructure to support those congresses. And um, during this year, which has been very tough, we have decided to come together. So to join forces with the municipality, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, here in Milano, uh, our airport company, which is CEA, uh, and also a lot of very important uh, private company like Pirelli, like Tim, like um, Italian stock market, uh, our transportation company, ATM, uh, decided to come together and to invest together in an infrastructure uh, that can support uh, you and everyone who wants to invest in the city of Milano and wants to pick the city of Milano as a destination. And uh, I think it's in very interesting for us to, to build this type of muscle in these times where, where we are challenged by a lot of issues, yeah, uh, in terms of safety, in terms of customer journey, in terms of the role of digitalization that is. Um, evolving a lot the way we uh, come together and, and having the opportunity to, to, to stay around one table and uh, address uh, the opportunity for the city of Milano, it, it's incredible. So um, I feel very privileged to, to lead these efforts, uh, but I think that everyone in the city has been giving um, a significant trust to, to this opportunity and, uh, and I'm really, really happy uh, to share with you that since uh, December, we have a team in place. We're working on a strategic plan um, with all the stakeholders um, with some news and, and some opportunities that I'm happy to, to share with you. The first one, uh, um, it's about the city itself, right? Um, even during the pandemic, we have been able to push forward the infrastructure transformation of the city of Milano and specifically um, the next time you will visit Milano, which I guess is not before the summertime, you will find a subway connecting our city airports, Milano Linate, to the city center uh, in uh, less than 15 minutes. 
so we, it's a completely new subway line that uh, came to life in the past years and is going to be open in 2021, offering everyone um, the opportunity to travel very fast from the city center of Milano to the city airport. And I think this gives very clear insights on how functional is the city of Milano because it's not that it's only very much connected to the key uh, airports uh, across the world, um, but it's also very much connected to the best destination in Italy. Uh, in a couple of hours, you can be on top of the Alps, you can be on the seaside, you can be in Rome or Florence, or Venice, uh, through the high-speed railway, uh, but we are investing, uh, we, we are improving, and we are giving the opportunity for you, if you visit Milano, to really uh, stay in a, in a beautiful city with uh, uh, very low difficulties to move around. So uh, I advise you to really uh, monitor how we are evolving our transportation system, but I trust me that it's going to give you an amazing experience um, next time you, you visit the city. The second one is that um, we are redesigning the calendar of the city, clearly, Milano uh, is a destination uh, in a specific moment of the year. We have decided to uh, move in the second part of the year uh, the large events of the city, specifically the Salon del Mobile. So instead of having the Salon del Mobile during the spring, we are planning to host the Salon in the first week of September. And um, we, we believe that this is going to be a, a very important a kickoff moment for the city as uh, we are going to have Salone and the most important um, fair, uh, including Fashion Week, uh, that are going to give uh, Milano a, a significant boost and give you, uh, you the opportunity to see again the city alive uh, as you may know the city. Uh, I think again it's, it's interesting and it's important to share the fact that we are working all together with all the stakeholders to design a new calendar for the city. Uh, Milano, uh, it's a very um, busy city, like every month we have a significant amount of events, excluding July and August, which is pretty quiet. Uh, the city is offering an incredible calendar and we've been working hard in the past years to create a calendar of the city. Uh, we have uh, a, a promotional calendar organized in week, and every um, month of the year, we offer a very specific week. We have design week, fashion week, uh, food week, uh, the Christmas week. Um, so it's a, there is an incredible marketing effort to really offer uh, our customer the opportunity not only to visit the city, uh, but also to be part of the energy of the city in those moments, where uh, in each week we usually have an average of 500 events that are popping up around the city uh, of Milan itself. And just to close, um, because I think it's important to stress that we are investing in, in, the, in, the, in the future, uh, we have been lucky to partner with Wood Roots, uh, that is going to be uh, in October in Milano, uh, and I think it's going to be a very important edition of World Youth because uh, we are going to discuss uh, with the key stakeholders of the aviation industry the future of transportation, uh, which is one of the uh, core uh, questions and the core driver of our business, the travel business. Um, we strongly believe that people will continue to travel. Um, we need to offer them the right infrastructure, a safe infrastructure, but also a very efficient infrastructure to, to reach out to new places and places like Milano, considering the new condition, uh, which are pretty much challenging. So uh, World Roots is going to be a forum uh, for the aviation industry, for the tourism industry, uh, where we're going to host all the global uh, players um, and discuss with them how we need to plan uh, our future. Um, and um, I, I hope to, to see a lot of you in Milano for that occasion. And I hope um, to have the opportunity to um, have a conversation with, with all of you. Uh, we are very much open uh, to question. We are very much open to question about uh, the safety of the city of Milano, um, the offering of the city of Milano, the opportunity to do business together. Uh, the opportunity to create uh, new events, uh, 
um, a new platform. Considering uh, this new normal, so reach uh, reach out to me, um, and uh, you can also take a look to esmilano.it, which is our uh, destination for uh, tourists, uh, where you can have a great update on what's happening in the city um, every week of the year. So um, I'm happy to wait for question and pass the ball to my colleague and. Um, I give the word to Elena back. Yes. Oh, what? Okay. Hi, everyone, again. And I, I think this presentation has been very inspiring. Uh, Luca has uh, made us really go through 2020 and uh, giving also a light for the future and so much vision, which uh, the city is, is really um, uh, now developing in concrete uh, acts and, and facts. And this is, I think, what is important uh, to, uh, to be consistent with the vision and to build uh, and reshape uh, when the time will come uh, for the restart of tourism, which will be, which will come, this, this we know. So um, now it's, uh, it's the time to, um, to pass uh, uh, the microphone to Flaminia. Uh, we are very happy to, uh, to involve her uh, in this uh, conversation uh, because um, the, the company she's working for is one of the main players and, by the way, also partner in the World Roots project. And, uh, and so she will give us an insight from uh, uh, the industry perspective. So um, the, the floor, <laughs> the virtual floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mariana. Thank you, thank you, Luca, for your very inspiring presentation. Um, I thank the IBTM and Yeni for the chance, the possibility to present uh, to share with you our thoughts and our experience during last year and the uh, um, planning for 2021. Uh, I'm Tonya Roberti. I'm the Global Sales Director of uh, In Group International. Thank you for sharing the presentation, Eleanor. And uh, our company um, is operating in the meeting and event industry since 1960. So we have more than six years of experience in the meeting industry. Um, we are operating thanks to our three offices in Italy, uh, Rome, Milan, and uh, Florence, and thanks to the other 14 offices uh, worldwide. Just to give you uh, an idea of uh, the, what we have done in 2020, we organized uh, by June uh, um, something like 90 virtual events and uh, uh, um, happening, you know, uh, at least 300 events by December. So uh, this is the reality, and uh, this is what I want to share with you today. What is happening in 2020? Coming back from the beginning, uh, if you, Eleanor, if you can share the slides, um, thank you. The next one, the next one, the next one. Again, yeah. Coming back to the beginning, coming back to the beginning, everyone in in our industry were shocked. The next one, please. We were shocked because our normality, the normality of uh, meeting planners, uh, um, uh, a normality done by flights, hotels, catering, uh, coffee break was completely destroyed and uh, uh, it was a revolution for us. And the virtual working space has become the new normal for ourselves. The next one, please. Um, some of our events were cancelled, some of our events was postponed, some of our events was transformed into the virtual world. Next one, we please. Uh, but the very big questions, the very big question was, uh, uh, the next one, please. For how long the stigma of the super spreader will affect our lives, will affect the life of the meeting and events industry planners? Because uh, as per our job, the next one, please, as per our job, we have been considered as a virus multiplier since our job is putting people together our job is connecting people the next one please so to face the reality 
to face the reality of uh, 2020, we had as a business uh, uh, planners to reinvent ourselves, knowing that the time, the energy, and the commitment that this takes, uh, uh, it's a it's a long it's a long uh, way. Uh, uh, but we need to be um, really um, focused uh, to be successful. The next one, please. In order to uh, um, face the situation and the crisis, and in order to react being more stronger than before, the next one, please, we have to put in place uh, uh, some of the qualities of the good meeting planner, of a good PCO. We have to be resilient in order to face the crisis, the next one. We have to be creative uh, in order to reinvent ourselves and to have new opportunities in the business scenario. We have, the next one please, we have not to lose ourselves in the fear of what is happening, the fear of the crisis in front of us, because we have not to miss the opportunities to reinvent ourselves. The next one please. It seems quite strange to talk about opportunities, but there is a big chance for our meeting planners. There are big chance for uh, professionals within the meeting industry to change our paradigm and to find out new way of business, to have a new approach for business. Because the next one, the pandemic uh, forced us uh, to embrace immediately the virtual uh, environment and the virtual and digital uh, environment uh, in a very very short time and this means that our uh, events at the very beginning were really far to be creative and innovative i would say that probably for some of our companies i'm talking about uh, in group international it was an acceleration because we were used already to work with streaming to work with the virtual environment but at that time in March, we had to transfer completely 100% of our events to a virtual and digital event. The next one. And uh, um, since uh, we were, you know, pushed up to put together in uh, 20 days virtual meetings, uh, the consequences was that for many people, for many stakeholders, the concept of virtual conferences was only to log into a platform a virtual platform like Zoom, like Teams, moving from one virtual room to another one and listening to frontal presentation. And the bad consequences was that for many people, virtual events had a bad reputation and many stakeholders shy away and waiting for venues to open the door again. The next one. But the reality, the big reality is that the meeting technology has arrived and changed forever dramatically the face of our industry the next one the digital and the uh, hybrid and virtual events are here to stay and they become uh, an integral part of our strategy for the future the next one we know that the next conferences, the next events, the next congresses uh, will be completely different. It's time now to let uh, go any old thinking, embracing the change and evolving ourselves. Post-COVID-19 events will be different. There will be a new normal. We have the next one, we have to craft our uh, experiences that will provide our attendees, our audiences, the maximum value. But the audiences, they will be different. We will have remote audiences and we will have uh, live uh, on-site audiences. So we have to change the model. We cannot rely anymore on old model and we have to innovate. We have to embrace the next one, the re digital revolution. The next one, please. Uh, using integrated models to provide a bridge between the online and the offline worlds. The next one, please. As I said at the very beginning, we have to find out a new paradigm of business. We have to find a new paradigm to let the meeting work again with new interaction way, with new communication model and solutions. The next one, 
But be certain, we have the certainty that we can deliver a virtual event um, as an inspiring and highly educational event. But we have not to be afraid to change our content, to change our model, to change our agenda, the tone of voice, and the presentation style. We have to shake up a little bit our certainty up to now and making a new uh, step forward, a new model, the next one. Because as we said, people have different expectations. Whether you are planning an hybrid event, or if you are a speaker preparing a presentation for an event, you need to think on how to engage your people, how to engage participants, the one in front of you in the room, or the one at home uh, connected through the platform. Uh, the next one. So uh, let's be very concrete and uh, think of what is happening in the next in the next month. We can have some positive aspects, and we will see how to create and how to organize successful events even in the next month. Uh, the next one, please. Uh, as I said, uh, we have some positive aspects to, <laughs> to analyze. The next one, please. Uh, if we are basing, you know, on um, a PC, recent PCMA um, statistics, uh, we know that uh, vaccines, that the 66% of planners of companies of like in Europe International have changed the way of thinking about what might be possible thanks to the vaccine containers. 10% already reserved space as a result of the news. So the idea is to come back a little bit to the normality, but again, to the new normal way of working and organizing events. The next one, please. As a positive thinking uh, again, we have to take into consideration that uh, digital allows for much more inclusivity, for much more diversity during the events, and we have a huge potential to have more interesting exchange so that we can reach a larger overall audience and a higher return on our investment. But on the negative side, the next one, please, uh, unfortunately, stakeholders and uh, and our our audiences are uh, every everyone is experiencing the so-called fatigue, you know, and people have much higher expectation um, if you compare to the ones that they have in twenty in twenty twenty. So to be complete, let's follow some rules. I would like to share with you some simple rules to put in place if you want to have a successful event. The next one, please. The first golden rules, the next one, please, is never, do not never replicate the Facebook events. You have to, to have the courage to change your paradigm, to change your agenda, to change your program and adapt reshape your program to the new environment, to the digital environment. The next one, please. The second rule is to keep it simple. Unfortunately, not everyone is not digital native. So you need to use very user-friendly tools. The next one, and of course, the third golden rule is uh, start with the why. When the why is clear, the how is easy. This is a, a rule that we can also apply to the face-to-face -face meeting. But going ahead with your customer journey, you have to fo follow six steps. The next one, please. You have to follow the six steps to have a successful digital event. The next one, please. First of all, as we said, the content, the right content for the right format. Second, the team. You need more competencies within your group, within your company. The third one, the right platform, the right tool. The fourth one, the fourth step that you have to take to use uh, um, uh, another approach with your sponsors. You have to think out of the box. You have to offer them new sponsors opportunities. And of course, you have to communicate in a different way. Take into consideration that virtual events are really more sustainable than the physical. 
if we go one by one to these uh, uh, steps, the next one, mm, we can see that as per the content, the next one, please. Uh, you have the priority that we have is to have an agenda, is to have a program that can reflect the new reality. So change the length of your conference, change the time of your conferences, that change the way of presenting for your company for your conferences, adapt your tone of voice to the channel that you are using, promote a clear marketing and communication campaign. Choose the right format according to the event personality. The next one, please. And we were talking about competencies. You need to have your digital team within your company. The next one, please. And you need to have people that are expert in uh, technology. You need to have people that are coach for your speakers and moderator. You need to have people that are expert for the fundraising for a virtual event. So your team, is to be you know, supported by a digital event team that will help you to put in place a good event. The next one, please. And for the platform, uh, there is no magical solution to find out the right tool, sure. But it depends from your needs. But you have not to constrain your event based on the platform capabilities. The next one, of course, you have to decide, uh, first of all, uh, uh, which kind of events you want to organize. The digital can give you a lot of possibility. You can organize an hybrid solution, you can organize an hybrid event with a combination between in-presence and virtual. You can organize a fully virtual event that is in, uh, with your immersive platform, or you can organize a multi-hub digital event, putting different cities linked broadcasted online but um when you're choosing your tool the next one please when you're choosing uh your tool you have to take consideration some factors that are the must have factors uh like the registration process the integrated agenda in your platform and a lot of things but some factors that is nice to have like the 3d like the 24 hour seven support like the video chat and 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 so on and so on the next one, please. Talking about sponsorship, you have to find out new way to recruit to make fundraising. The next one, please. And uh, um, you need to redesign, as we said, the opportunities. You have to offer different uh, tools to your sponsor to attract your sponsors. Bear in mind that the human interaction uh, uh, represents the essential uh, driver for each sponsor. So be creative, um, make a virtual exhibition, use the gamification, use the networking opportunities of the tool of the, of the platform, but remember to offer customized proposals to all of your stakeholders. The next one, please. And uh, as I said, um, try to be uh, um, very clear in your communication. The next one. You have to communicate uh, before, on site, and after your event to be very transparent on what they can expect from your event, creating awareness and painting a clear picture. You have to inspire your people so to reliability and engage your people uh, and at the end you have to be clear on what will be available on your platform at the end of the events make some survey to get the feedback that will help you to build up the next uh, events you want to organize the next one please and as I said remember that the survey feedback is always helping you for the next and future events and the data that you are collecting are your potential for all the stakeholders you can segment your audience you can create different profiling and you can uh, um, have a different uh, um, uh, tracks for traffic data the next one please and do not forget as I as I said, the next one, please. And do not forget, as I said, that virtual and digital events are really much more sustainable than face to face. So why not promoting a fundraising campaign during the virtual events? Why not promoting, you know, a public and informative broadcasting for the for the patients from from the public, depending from your audience? 
Um, the next one, please. Uh, just, to, just to, I don't know how long, uh, Flaminia, but I, there are some interesting questions uh, now to be answered. So maybe otherwise we'll, yeah. so I don't know if you can close. Thank I'm you. Finishing. Yeah, I'm finishing in two minutes. Uh, the next one, please. And uh, who's the producer uh, for this uh, for this trip? As the PTO is a professional congress organizer, because he can identify the goals, the contents, assess the digital tools, using the right technology, developing the multi-channel communication, the sponsorship, helping you with the sponsorship, the finance, and the organization. The next one, please. And I'm going to to finish the next one, please. So some tips, be prepared when you're organizing any, an hybrid event, rehearse when you are uh, preparing your hybrid or virtual events, map out video and audio interaction, thanks to protocols. The next one, please. Make sure that your speakers look great and sound great, and have a well green facilitator. The facilitator can be the link between the live and the virtual delegates. But the next one, please, if nothing, you know, uh, uh works test 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 the next one wins please and always have a backup plan i'm finishing with a quote the next one please i'm finishing with a quote of the pcma president uh, saying that we have changed not just for goods but for the better and we are sure that tomorrow is going to be brighter thank you very much thank you we are ready for we are ready for the questions. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Flaminia. I think there are some very interesting questions, especially for Luca. Just to, to say a few words. Uh, I think uh, what, what is now emerging is how important is the partnerships. Uh, and this is why we are partnering both with the private and, uh, and public sector as, uh, as a national uh, tourist uh, board. Uh, cities and main cities have a key role in the restart of, of tourism. We know that uh, about 60% uh, of our international travelers before the pandemic were coming, uh, were visiting our cities because of uh, leisure and because of, uh, uh, of the meeting industry. And I think one of the uh, positive elements that we are experiencing now is that we see the hub also the cities, are larger cities are partnerships with their surroundings, with the smaller cities and where the environment. Uh, and this is a new, I think, uh, um, uh, lesson learned, I think, that uh, we, we have from, uh, from the pandemic. Um, and the fact that we have decided to partner with IBTM is because we really want also to present all the cities, so there will be a series of presentations, and we started with Milan because of the new convention bureau, and of course uh, we are partnering uh, constantly with the national convention bureau also, uh, who uh, is working with us uh, on daily basis to, to develop uh, for the research of the industry. So maybe maybe Tamina can just uh, mute. Uh, are you? Can you mute your probably microphone because we can hear something in the background. I mute. I'm mute. I'm mute. <laughs> so if you can mute. So I think there are a few questions. So Michael, I need to. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for your uh, presentation. We've got some questions here um, for Luca. So. Uh, Luca, great presentation on the destination. Um, what will you consider to host in Milan the first in-person post-pandemic business event and international con congress? And do you have some in the pipeline already? Um, so yeah, that's for you, Luca. Oh, thank you for the question. Um, I think it's important to give you a bit of a context in the sense that we have a great pipeline um, and uh, but right now, um, we still have a restriction from uh, government. So our expectation is that in a um, couple of months, I would say, we can restart to host uh, events for the Italian customers, uh, so which does not imply international traveling. And uh, we expect that um, June, uh, we will start to have uh, international events in the city of Milan. Um, and um, we expect to have the first significant uh, fair in September, which was the international fair. 
I think it's important to say that we have right now two significant restrictions. The first one is national one, and it's based on uh, our um, policy. And the second one is um, uh, international one, and given the agreement between states and uh, specifically the impact that those rules have on the aviation industry. So um, I, I want to stress here maybe one, one concept which I strongly believe. Um, I think that it's, right now it's not really about Italy or it's not really about um, Milano. I think it's more about Europe and we need to continue to collaborate uh, and work together in order to create uh, for the next semester a safety um, zone where we can attract um, events, but also we can allow people to move around uh, different frontiers. Uh, we are pretty positive that all the work that the diplomacy is doing uh, at the local, national, international level is going to have an impact um, from June. Uh, but I think it's important to, to work all together and to build back a reputation at the global level, not just for Milano, but for Europe as a continent altogether. So I think we are in the same boat with our colleagues and we need to really work together to, to get there. Um, there are a lot of projects in the pipeline to create country passports and align um, different um, safety tools in our infrastructure. Uh, we have uh, all the investment plans as a city and as stakeholders of the city. So uh, as soon as we can roll out the investment, we will be ready uh, for, for the future. Great. Um, and th this is a question that's come through for uh, Flamina. So do, do you think business events will always have a digital element in the future? And what do you think that will look like? Yeah, that's what I was saying during my presentation. Uh, the, the meeting industry has changed and uh, it's changed dramatically forever. So the digital aspect will stay and uh, we have to look at it as an opportunity to enlarge the audiences for conferences, to enlarge you know, the attendees for conferences. And uh, um, I think that the hybrid, we have to find out a way to have a sustainability of the hybrid events. And we're working on that. We're working on packages for our clients. But I think that for the future, the driver will be a huge collaboration between destination PCOs and the hosts. And thanks to this collaboration and thanks to this flexibility, we will reach the goal, you know, to restart, you know, stronger than before. Just to add something to what Lucas said, in our pipeline in Milan, we have for congresses, international congresses, medical congresses starting from August. So huge events that will take place in the city in uh, end of August, September. Then we have the route, as Luca and Marina said, in uh, the first days of October. So we have a very uh, full planning of events uh, in the second half of the year. Okay. Now, unfortunately, we, we are running out of time. Um, so I want to thank you all for your participation today. Um, we have a short little video that we would like to play. Um, so thank you to the speakers as well. And stay tuned for more updates from uh, Ennet and the country of Italy for further webinars to come throughout the course of 2021. So Eleanor, if you can please play the video.
So, ciao a tutti, arrivederci and uh, hope to see you and have a, a very bright continuation of the year starting from now on. Thank you very much. Thank ciao. you. Thank you very much. Ciao. 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 Ciao.